Do you know how to save? Yes, for sure. We can we can show you. You know, we can we can uh, we can explain how to save. Welcome to the Italian Wine Podcast Lockdown Series. Every Monday we'll be connecting with Italian wine people. Join us to find out what they're doing and drinking today. This podcast is brought to you by Colangelo and Partners, the leading fine wine and spirits agency in the US. Visit Colangelo and Partners on www.colangelopr.com. Ciao Matteo, come stai? Bene, ciao Laura. I'm very well. That's so nice to see you this morning. Nice to see you too. And how are you doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain. I have a great family and it's a beautiful day outside today. So I'm going to focus on the positive. Absolutely. You know, at least in this moment, you know, having good health, it's, uh, it's already something very important. So me, my team, my family, we're all well. And so I, we can't complain at all. So happy to hear that. Um, and I'm really excited to do this interview with you because I've, I've been a huge fan of um, the wines of Trento Dock and of course the wines of Ferrari for so long. I feel like we're family even though, um, you know, we're far away because through wine we're all connected. It is. And I have to thank you very much for being a great ambassador of Trento Dock. This is also on behalf of all the Trento Dog producers and on behalf of Sabrina, who is a very good friend of yours. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to love great uh, wine, especially great sparkling wine. I'm, I've always been a fan and I think it goes with everything. And, and we'll, we can talk about that in a little bit, but um, I wanted to uh, just to casually talk about what's going on in these times and um, perhaps how you're doing and your family and what you're doing to keep busy and So maybe um, we'll start by, I know you're the CEO of Lunelli Group. Um, it's a big job and you have a lot of things that you're responsible for. So how does it feel just being, you know, uh, working from home and staying home throughout all of this? You know, it's a, it's a very difficult time because uh, there is a lot of uncertainty. And uh, for example, here in Italy, most of the businesses and industries are closed while, for example, in the, in, um, food and beverage companies can be open because, uh, and especially because of the work in the vineyard, we cannot stop it, you know, completely because nature doesn't stop. And so there was a very big responsibility in managing uh, the company and the group and the people in this, uh, in this uh, situation. I think the, our absolute priority was uh, to make sure to keep everybody safe. So we had to reorganize all our um, work in order to make sure that the contact between people was absolutely minimized and that people would uh, stay far away one from the other. So, so we yeah, get up. Beautiful. I was also trying to get to the Entos in the weekends when I was in New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult, but this island is so beautiful because it's only um, full-time residents, 2,000 people. Um, but, you know, in the summer it gets to be like 10,000. But since we're in April, when we first came out here, we were um, just you know, maybe not too many people, but, but still my husband was a little bit nervous. You're going to meet him one day when we come to Trent, Trentino. Uh, he was a little bit nervous. He said, well, what if we run out of food? So we went, we went to the grocery store. We were doing all of these things, but we were eating the same thing, chicken, beans, rice, you know, like all of the staples, but we're lucky because we live near all these bodies of water. We have so many beautiful beaches. So we go clamming. You know, we, we go in the beach and we, um, we have this incredible thing that we do where we like, in the summer we can go with our bathing suits and we can dig with a rake for the clams. But in the winter it's too cold, of course, to go inside the water. So one of our neighbors, he taught us this new method where you can take like, it looks like a foam board, you know, like a gray board. And you put your boots and your rake, but you can sit in the sand and you can just dig for the clams. So I've become such an expert. This is what I do to get my, uh, my anxiety out. Um, I've become such an expert. I was thinking about Trent, uh, Trento Dock wines, right? So imagine if I had to eat clams for a whole week and nothing else. I can make different preparations of clams to go with all of the different styles of Trento Dock wines. 
So for example, you were saying like, and I know it's true from working with all the beautiful producers there, some people make a very refreshing, crisp, clean, sparkling wine. So for that, we can make some raw clams. Just We can just shuck them and serve them. But for some of the ones like Ferrari, the, the, the ones that have extended leaves, we can make like clam chowder. So we can make like baked clams. We can do so many things. So what would be like a joke? Even even a, a spaghetti with clams. Sometimes yeah. I don't know how it works with your clams, but uh, it's uh, it's a good pairing with uh, with uh, with Trento Doc. You know, in general, for example, when you have a, a certain a touch of uh, of a fat of uh, of uh, that the 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 crisp acidity of Saint Trento Doc is a good balance, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, raw fish obviously is. Uh, is a very typical and perfect uh, pairing. And it's funny because it's a mountain sparkling wine, but it's a certainly, you know, a great wine for seafood. Should we open some sparkling wine? We're talking all about this um, sparkling wine. I'm gonna open this Trento Doc wine here to pour myself a glass, but I had a question. So I've always been nervous to savor wine. Like at, uh, a long time ago, I was on a cruise ship and I tried to savor a bottle of champagne. I, I'm a champagne lover. I love and sell so much. And Trento Doc, of course, sparkling wine. But I, I've never savored a bottle because I'm too scared. Do you know how to savor? Yes, for sure. We can we can sh show you. You know, we can uh, we can uh, we can explain how to savor. Actually, you have to pay attention every time. You know, this is something that you need to do with uh, with a little bit of attention. Because uh, you know, especially you know, because uh, obviously glass uh, can be dangerous. But I can show you how, how you how you know how to do it. Then you know, uh, I, I always uh, say to people that they shouldn't you know repeat unless you know there is somebody who knows how to do it. Because uh, again, it can be dangerous. But I can show you. Yeah, I, I, I also want to see your mountain. I want to see the beauty of of Trentino. So. Yeah, because for sure we want to go outside to saber. So let me take the bottle. I show you how to prepare it, and then we go out so that you see the mountains, and uh, and uh, that's also the appropriate place uh, to to saber because uh, you know inside of a inside of the house uh, can you know you can do a lot of damage. Uh, yes, I don't want that. Uh, you have to identify in the bottle. You know there is a, a sign that indicates basically where. There is uh, the two parts of the bottle get uh, together. So you normally, if you look carefully, you will notice uh, that there is a, a, a part where you can see there is a sort of conjunction. Mm -hmm. It is very important that when you savor, you go exactly in this. Uh, you will savor exactly in this area because this is uh, where, uh, the area where the bottle will be, uh, you know, will uh, we'll make, uh, you know, uh, will uh, we'll create the break as you are looking for. Right. First of all, uh, start from a cold bottle. Normally, for example, when you are in the mountain, the perfect thing is to put uh, the, the neck inside of the snow. Oh, I love so that. That's it's great. very cold. And it's even better when you have the, the neck, which is colder than the rest of the bottle. Okay. Or if you have a you know a glass a nice bucket, put the the bottle upside down. That's a good technique. Uh, then uh, you prepare it, and uh, I normally I normally do I normally take away the cage. Why? Because uh, because otherwise when you will heat with the saber, you eat uh, this part of metal which doesn't you know and doesn't really work well. So this is. Uh, what you can do. So you just uh, raise it a little bit so that the glass is free. Okay. So in terms of temperature, you know, for Trento Doc, uh, we, uh, you know, we normally suggest uh, to, to serve it uh, at the temperature, which is, uh, let's say from nine to, uh, you know, let's say 10, 10, 11 degree, uh, depending on, uh, you know, usually the warmer, it's better for reserves. But I normally emphasize the fact that it's better to have it a little bit colder than warmer because if it's too cold, you will leave it a little bit in the glass and it will, it will warm up and opens up. When it's too warm, there is no way back. So that's, uh, that's one thing, that one very you know, obvious uh, comment. So now we can go 
I, I actually here I don't have the, the 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 typical saber, so I took a knife. Oh, nice! I can take a knife, but I don't use it obviously from the from the area in the area where you normally cut the meat. Right. It's better to use it on the opposite side, otherwise you will damage the knife. Okay, and pl so what you will we will go outside, and with the knife I will try to do it. I okay? love it. So normally when I do it, it works. Uh, if there is a camera, usually, you know, something gets wrong, but we will see together. <laughs> I have faith in you. So let's move. Okay. okay, let's see if it works. Wow. You see, nice and easy. That was so good. You're a professional. <laughs> Thank you. And you see, it gets, it get, becomes very sharp. So, you know, one thing that I really have to say, you know, never put your finger on top of it because it becomes extremely sharp. And obviously don't, uh, don't put it on your mouth because I've seen, you know, this is where how people normally, you know, gets, uh, uh, gets, uh, uh, you know, problem. Okay. So now because of the, of the pressure of the Ferrari, everything gets thrown out. So the, the wine is perfectly clean and we can have a glass together. You see our Ferrari per le bianco, the neck is, uh, has been cut perfectly. I see, yeah. You see, it's, uh, it's quite, uh, because uh, we're heating uh, the, 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 the glass uh, exactly in the point where there is the conjunction, since it's cold, it gets broken sharply. And it's important because so you have no, uh, being so clean, you can understand you have no piece of glass that can come into your, into your, into your, into your wine. Can you, can you use something besides a knife? Have you ever used anything besides the back of a knife? I have to say that people try, try and sometimes uh, uh, saber with so many things. I've seen uh, people sabering with anything, with even with the ski, or uh, even with uh, with uh, watches, iPhones, and uh, but you know, as I, I as I said at the beginning, also always make sure that you do it appropriately because uh, you know it's a it's a game, it's a um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a joke, but uh, it has to be done appropriately and with a lot of attention. One thing I want to underline, uh, to underline is uh, remember this uh, piece of glass with the cork will uh, fly away. I was in a garden with nobody else, so there was no danger. If you have people in front of you, never do it. And another thing, sometimes people say, oh, I want to make a movie of you. Never put somebody in front because uh, you will be, it will be dangerous. But you know, I have to say that as a, as a game, I made it also with the ski once, with my friends, and uh, and doing with the skis, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, it was fun. Uh, one uh, one curiosity, you know, somebody can perhaps uh, think how did it start, you know, and the, uh, and the tradition of sabering actually comes from very far away. It was uh, from uh, it started from the, the the troops of Napoleon. The Napoleon troops, uh, because uh, and there was this uh, tradition of taking a bottle of champagne and open it with the with the with the saber from sometimes you know even from the horse and and so it's a tradition that comes from far away uh, that uh, that uh, that we are continuing in a sense. So okay. the sabering has been. Uh, I think Napoleon took his sword and sabered the bottles of champagne. Correct? Yes, yes. It was Napoleon and actually their troops, uh, his troops, uh, who, who traditionally after the victories. So it is. Uh, it has this uh, touch of the history that it's um, that it's a, a nice one. Uh, plus, I have to say that probably at that time, you know, the the, the glass bottles were not as they are now. So it was uh, it was a uh, you know the trick was probably even more difficult. But uh, they had big, they had big sabers. <laughs> so the origin of sabering comes from there. And uh, as I said, nowadays uh, people uh, tries with many other, many different things. I've seen, uh, I have a good friend who does it with the fork and with the spoon yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it's funny. So I'm going to I'm going to build my confidence, Matteo. I'm going to start to try to savor some champagne tonight. But I would think I'm going to repeat what you said. The do's and don'ts. The do's have to be very, very cold, right? So I yeah. don't have any confidence. So I'm going to I'm going to use an ice bucket and ice the neck. That's correct, right? That's perfect. So put the bottle upside down so that the neck becomes very cold inside of the ice. That's a very important point. Then, then I'm going to make sure that I, I, I find the seam where the two pieces of glass connect. Absolutely. So that you will go with the, with the saber, the knife or anything. You will go exactly in that point. Okay. And I'm going to make the And hit the, the glass exactly, you know, in the area where the, con the junction is. Okay. And also, as I showed you before, I took away the cage because otherwise you will eat not, you do not eat uh, the, the glass, but you will eat the cage. And this creates, this is a, uh, a little bit different, you know, because it's the, it's the sharp uh, uh, touch of the knife towards the glass that creates the perfect break. Perfect. So again, so with attention, with, with a lot of attention, you know, enjoy it. Okay, perfect. And make sure that no one is standing in front of me and I try to take a view of the mountain. Yeah, even when you are, you know, you could do it, you know, even, uh, you know, the, the important thing is nobody in front of you. Okay, I'll do, nice... I will do it inside the beach into the way into the ocean. Yeah, but make sure that you get back the, the piece of, uh, of the cork and the piece of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, glass. We spoke about sustainability. I will go out and take my, 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 my cork as well from the garden. <laughs> So first of all, cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin. chin. <laughs> mm. oh, so good. Thank you very much. You see in the, in the Trento Doc, uh, for example, in the Blanc de Blanc, uh, you should feel uh, the flavor of the Chardonnay. This uh, nice white flower, apple flavors, which are typical of Chardonnay. By the way, Trentino is also very famous in Italy for apples. Yeah. So it's not a chance that uh, it's not by chance that I think our Chardonnay has these beautiful apple flavors. Will you tell all of my friends, all the Trento Doc producers, that everyone in New York says hi? And we can't wait till they we can see them in person. And please just know that we're when we get to open our restaurants, we're going to support the wine. So tell everyone we send our love and. Um, Maybe chin chin to the producers of Trento Doc. Chin chin to all the producers of Trento Doc. And uh, you know, thank you very much, Ted, for being ambassador of wines in, uh, in the United States. We look forward to coming to New York and to the United States uh, again uh, to toast together. Salute. And come again to visit us. Ciao, well, ciao. See you next Monday for another virtual wine journey Italian wine podcast lockdown series.